Welcome to Radio Free HPC. This is where we talk about supercomputing, high performance computing, and other technology topics. I'm your Toastmaster, Rich Bruckner from Inside HPC, with my co hosts, Dan Olds from Gabriel Consulting and Henry Newman from Instrumental. Now let's get to the show. All right, we're back. Radio Free HPC with Dan and Henry. Welcome, guys. How's it going out there? Hey. Very good, Rich. Oh, you? Uh, fantastic. There's a lot the, of news there going is. on the yes. last there is, weeks. There is, there is. And, and being a, you know focused on supercomputing, we have to talk about Top 500. And, and the big news <laughs> leading up to that was this new Chinese supercomputer. Uh, they're calling it Tianhe 2. Uh, the folks from Intel are calling it Milky Way. So if you hear those two, they are interchangeable. But this machine is massive in scale, uh, apparently has scored over 30 petaflops on Linpack, and will certainly, if that's correct, be crowned as the uh, number one system in the world. Pretty much doubling up Titan, right? And it might, and it might hold all the way to supercomputing. At, with those yeah, we, I don't think anyone was expecting a, a system of this scale at this time or even for the next year or so. It's built on Xeon and Intel Xeon Phi. Some pretty impressive specs, but uh, I wanted to kind of go around the table here. Uh, first, you, Henry, what was your initial impression when, when you read the news? Don't care. And I'll talk about later the reason I don't okay. care. <laughs> because something else important happened that week. Going to me, I think it's interesting, and it, it was unanticipated. If I remember right, it was ISC last year where I talked to uh, some people from NUDT, and they were talking about a 100 petaflop system for 2015 and yeah. there wasn't any talk of of this interim system also interesting that they're going with phi at this time as opposed to the gpus and right, what are we looking right. at what are we looking at this thing 32,000 zeons but but dan it's clear it's, it's probably clear the reason they got ivy bridge processors they got them early yeah. it's kind of a package Those deal new choices. is what yeah. we're implying. Okay. It's yeah. yeah, so early access to the fastest, uh, you know, the first batch of uh, great Xeons, uh, the latest stuff. From, from what I understand, uh, China wanted to be number one in the top 500 at this particular juncture. They, they wanted a system that would win in June of 2013, and they asked Intel if, what they could propose to make that happen, and this is the result. Are we expecting this to actually hit the chart in June? It looks like it will, right, from what we're hearing? Yeah, I mean, the preliminary reports, Jack Dongara went there and a number of other people. From what I can tell, that these results are being verified. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I think we'll see it uh, hit the chart. And what are we looking at? 32,000 uh, Xeons, 48,000 Phi's, and yes. peak performance of 54.9, and we're figuring something around 30 sustained, which uh, uh, will yeah. double up what else uh, Titan, right? Yeah, uh, approximately double what uh, Titan is, which is the fastest machine in the U.S. today. At, well, uh, in the world Oak today. In the world, yes. Or no, Sequoia course. is. No, Sequoia is a hair under that. Is that number uh, two? Okay, around, that's around, right. Uh, I think it's at 12 point something. Okay. Uh, but yeah, um, either that's way, right. huge machines. Yes. Uh, uh, and strangely, I think, Henry, you mentioned this in our pre preview talk, uh, if you look at those large-scale machines and how they're balanced for I.O., this one doesn't seem to uh, have those same kind of balance points uh, in terms of storage. and. Yeah, 12, 12 terabytes mm -hmm. of storage on a, what, how many, how many, excuse me, 12 peta, that makes petabytes more sense. of storage. And <laughs> one, yes, it, it does. But in a single petabyte of memory, so let's see, you can do che 12 checkpoints, maybe 11 and a half. Yeah. Well, on a system that size, can you get that many checkpoints, you think? Yeah. Ah. I was being facetious, Dan. It's I would think way less than that. maybe one, mm -hmm. if that. <laughs> maybe yeah, one. I mean, certainly, a machine of this scale needs to do a lot of I.O. to be efficient uh, on a lot of codes. And, yeah, and effective. And it's using some kind of Besides proprietary efficient. something based on InfiniBand, from what I understand, as the interconnect. They're calling it TH Express 2 which is uh, probably just another generation based on Tiani 1A, the machine that took the top 500 over about, a, about two and a half years ago. So what's this interconnect? Uh, what's the technology behind the interconnect? Do we know? Uh, at least for 1A, it was based on InfiniBand. You would assume it's going to be based on InfiniBand, but they have their own libraries. Yeah, they didn't yeah. use Intel. They all have their own 
in, you know, interconnect. I assume it has the routing topology and everything in the libraries. But, you know, we're never going to find out. And more importantly, does Lindbeck really care about interconnect? Not so much. Not so much. Does it care about mm, I.O.? Not so much. Not so much. And that was the point why I said it's a who cares. So as we talked about ahead of time, you know, ahead of time, there was some, another announcement the same week. I think, Dan, you and Rich read it. I sent yeah. you the email, what I found. I thought it was really interesting that we actually did real science with the supercomputer at Blue Waters, which isn't on the top 500 for the reasons that Bill Kramer discussed. And that we discussed in earlier, we discussed that science. in an earlier episode as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, they didn't did submit a number, but uh, yeah, and uh, it, it, it reached a very significant milestone. Uh, uh, Dr. Thomas Schultes and a couple other folks, I think, I'm going to get that name wrong, Dan, so please uh, sure. edit. Um, Schulten, I believe. Schulten, yeah, yeah. So anyway, the researchers used uh, the Blue Water supercomputer. They've, uh, they've simulated the uh, HIV virus, and this could lead to uh, treatments for that disease, which affects millions of people across the planet. Uh, a, a huge and, milestone. And, and the techniques that were used, I think that's also critically important. Is, as we all have heard in the last few months, there's a new SARS virus that's extremely deadly. So the mo modeling techniques that the, this team, it was an integrated team, learned using Blue Waters, uh, will allow them to model other viruses and i think for the sake of humanity that's going to be pretty critical because the next pandemic you know who knows when it's coming but the it's other coming. thing here too that's interesting is that this is perhaps the very biggest structure ever modeled ever simulated at 64 million atoms so they actually had to use the the scale of this system as well this is truly, at least from the article, looks like one of these problems that you couldn't have solved without a massively scaling supercomputer. Correct. And the other thing, there's a, there, we'll put two links up. One to, it was in a medical journal that I saw, and one that NSF did with the, the whole team and discussed what they did and why they did it and how they did it. And th that the fact is, this, the, the, and that's what Blue Waters was about for the country, is to do basic research and basic science. And this push the forefront in multiple directions and it's in my opinion as a you know, as someone involved in the supercomputer business this is why we have supercomputers yeah. not yeah. top yeah five. and in fact you know these two stories came out about the same time yeah uh, the hiv story from blue waters and uh, this chinese supercomputer and i was kind of dismayed to see all the attention and the buzz was around this machine that looks to be designed expressly for LINPAC versus real science, which is what the Blue Waters was designed for. Well, it's not to say that, that Tiani 2 isn't going to do real science. It's just Certainly. that it's not going to do real science. It most likely will not do real science at the scale that it was built. Tiani 1 was assembled uh, once in its largest form to run LINPAC, but then it was parceled out to a lot of different constituencies that ran everything from soup to nuts on it. And I would wonder if uh, Tiani 2 is going to be the same kind of system. Well, it, it's very possible. I mean, they did run some other some problems at scale. We should, should note that. I mean, I do have some case studies about science done on the big Tiani 1A system. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, in this case, you know, using the Xeon, uh, you know, may, maybe uh, you know, getting the codes running uh, won't be as difficult a proposition. But time will tell. Well, they're pretty good when it comes to optimizing for any sort of co of coprocessor GPUs. Yes. And I, I imagine those skills are at least going to translate to Phi to some extent. Well, but they they you know part of it is I'm sure they're using the Intel co code generator and sure. compiler. <clears throat> There's no way they're going to build their own compiler in this yeah. short of time. Yeah, you're probably sure. right. For for that system and 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 thread scheduler and all that stuff. You know, I'm thinking they're having to do their yeah, own stuff. Yeah, it's an all stuff. Intel solution. Correct. Well, how long do we think this is going to remain on top of the list? My bet is past supercomputing 13, till next so year. June of 2014, at least, I guess. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, there, there's always possible surprises out there. But, well, the, uh, the K computer took out Tiani 1 as a big surprise, remember? Yes, that was, uh, especially when it happened. No yep. one was expecting it that quickly. 
and uh, so uh, but I, I don't expect it to be dethroned um, in, in November in, in, in Denver at uh, SC 13 I think it'll still be number one so you know a significant this is one of the largest deployments of Xeon period on the planet not just uh, looking at the Phi so this is a, this is a big monster of a machine well we'll watch it and see what happens so I guess as we wrap up this story, guys, I think the, uh, we're going to have the inevitable uh, stories coming out. Is the U.S. falling behind in science and in you know computer technology? And I think and the are we water doing? story says, yes, we are firmly rooted with, with great uh, uh, technology, and we're doing significant science on those machines. So, so don't let this one uh, machine uh, fool you. Um, you know, longer trends may be different. But uh, there is some great stuff going on right here on U.S. soil. Are you saying then that the West, the entire Western world isn't doomed? <laughs> I won't go that far. Oh, okay. <laughs> but at least from the supercomputing standpoint, <laughs> not right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good enough. That's good enough for me. That'll get me through the next year. All righty. That's it for this edition of Radio Free HPC. Thank you for listening, and be sure to check back often for new episodes. Also, check out our website for more content, links, and a place for you to let us know what you think about the show. We're at RadioFreeHBC.com. Thanks again. We'll be back with another exciting episode real soon.